right, here we go. Welcome to a very special edition of the MMA Fight Corner. Live tonight from the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada for Lion Fight. Oh my God, what an amazing night it's gonna be. We have Billy Mirror here from MMA Weekly. We have Ryan McKinnell and one of our favorite guests of all time, Stitch Em Up, Joe Schillen, joining us right now. Joe, how's it going tonight? You excited to be here? Uh, I'm really excited about the fight tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely excited too, but one thing I'm a little not excited about, so let's just get this out of the way. You, yourself, are not fighting on the card tonight. Bummer. Yes, yeah, kind of a letdown. Ex uh, explain the situation. Well, the Nevada Athletic Commission has uh, rules and regulations and they care about fighter safety, which is why we have a commission. And uh, some of my medical stuff wasn't turned in or processed in the right amount of time that they wanted. And uh, you know, it was just really unfortunate because I'd already trained you know, seven and a half weeks for the fight. I was really looking forward to the fight. I was ready to fight. And uh, it is what it is. I got to wait. And, uh, so, uh, uh, gotta wait till the next one. But we, we will be guaranteed to see you on the next card. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. I mean, you, you gotta be a little bummed, obviously, not just the training camp, but I mean, this is now the second fight for Lion Fights on national TV, Muay Thai in America, finally getting out to the masses. That's also gotta be a little disappointing, too. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I like to think uh, I had a lot to do with the getting to this point and uh, yeah it's a little frustrating to not be uh, up on the, on the TV you know, but uh, it's just going to be that much better when I come back to my fight absolutely looking forward to it well we absolutely have a stack show tonight We've got fighters from the entire card coming out I see your boy over here Kevin Ross standing there he's got a fight coming up tonight uh, we were supposed to be joined by Simon Marcus but he's not going to be making it he's fighting for the first ever Light heavyweight title in lion fights. I know you. I know you want to get your hands on that belt. Uh, I do. It looks like a good looking belt. I really want it's it. a big ass belt. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, one of the, the things about uh, tonight's fights, second fight, like we talked about, second time on Access TV. The Hard Rock right now is pumping, and one of the best parts about having Muay Thai on Friday night here in Las Vegas is that it is it's Fight Friday, okay? Because we have had fight week for the last week and it has been an exciting fight week because we have the fights tonight and then tomorrow night UFC 158 George St. Pierre against Nick Diaz a fight that I, I know everybody here is excited as, as can be for this fight but you especially Joe you're uh, you're very close with Nick Diaz uh, I think I'm pretty close to him I don't know if I call him very close but uh, he punches me in the face from time to time I kick him a little bit so, that's, that's probably as close as anyone gets yeah, so I mean probably, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell uh, tell us when was the last time you saw got to train with Nick? Uh, I was training with him uh, last week. Uh, I just got back uh, Monday. On Monday? Yeah. How's he How's he looking? Because I'll tell you, he has been in absolute rare form for these press conferences. You know, uh, he's in great shape. He actually, uh, I think he put on a little bit of muscle over the last year, and uh, he's in great shape. He's training hard. He's really focused, and he's as good as I've ever seen him. So I'm really looking forward to the fight. And, uh, both of these guys have the tools to beat each other. You know, it's just a matter of uh, who gets off first and who ex executes their game plan. But, uh, so they hope he does what he uh, wants to do. Now, you, you've trained with Nick, yeah, and one of the questions that uh, came up uh, during a lot of this was uh, GSP had said that Nick doesn't train with better boxers, that GSP deals with better boxers on a regular basis, and uh, that Nick Diaz would get brutally beat up if he trained with the people that GSP did. Do you agree with that statement? Uh, I don't know who he is training with, but I know that Andre Ward and the boxers that Nick Diaz is sparring with are uh, the best 168-pound and 70-pound boxers in the world, so I don't know how you can train with better guys than that. I, want, I wanted to ask you, Joe, um, one of the things about Nick we were kind of talking about earlier, and it kind of been the theme of this week as far as uh, the UFC is concerned is kind of his um, his approach to the promos, the way he answers questions, and uh, you know you were saying a little bit earlier that in no way, shape, or form is that an act. No, no, no. Yeah. He's, he's the realest person I've ever met. Why we get along up there? I try to be very real. I keep myself very real. Very real. No bullshit. He doesn't like you. You know, he doesn't like you. He just answers, just answering the questions honestly. And he's the biggest issue is. You know, and that level, and we're talking about uh, live fights, the stage is moving up, we 
exercise coming. UFC's here, it's been here. It's 900 questions a day, all day long. And uh, our shit gets old, so. Now, you were kind of talking about them breaking into the market of North America. I talked about earlier Simon's workout. It was kind of, it wasn't, if you would have taken that open workout and put it in a place like Thailand or China, I mean, it would have been packed to the brim. Uh, Lionfoot Fights puts on a great promotion. It's clean. They have great fighters. What do you kind of see the future and kind of the ceiling of uh, Muay Thai in America and Lion Fights in general and, the, and how's that's going to go, you know, kind of here in the coming years and, you know, all that good stuff? I mean, I, I, I see it growing like uh K1 and Glory have overseas. I think that uh, there's definitely a market here in the U.S. The last show, the first fight that uh, I fight did on Access was the number one trending topic. That's that night. And, uh, you know, it's the fans going to see. Everybody I know in the know name, even Nick, you know, who wants one of my own fights in the house of the day. You couldn't believe what we do. You know, everybody wants to watch that. So uh, I think when the U.S. Uh, it's on TV, it's going to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Lion Fight is the best promotion in all the world. It's really pushing my sport right now in the U.S. and I think it'll take over in the UFC and Lion Fight promotion. And, and we were kind of talking about the passion of the fans. You know, with, with, with K1, with kickboxing, with Muay Thai, you get, a, you get a niche fan group. Of course, we're trying to capitalize on the MMA market, but these fans are really passionate, and they're, and they're, and they're drawn to the sport sometimes for other reasons than, say, a, a typical MMA fan. <laughs> oh, <they're> just, just <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, what was the point? Well, see, I, I, what I do love is that the, the one thing about these fights is just the, the, the excitement and the crowd. The last time it was absolutely insane. Uh, the energy here is through the roof for every Muay Thai fight, and that's what you need to see, and that's what you need to see on Access TV. You know, when I, I've watched Access, they had some, it's Showtime from down in Brazil and some of those cards, and you know, it just you, you didn't have the same it, it environment. You know, you get here in Vegas for the fights. Well, you, you know, uh, Joe brings up a good point, and that is uh, there's going to be the UFC and line fights with Muay Thai. Uh, do you feel there's a possibility now with boxing being on the decline that we might see the rise of Muay Thai because it's such an exciting discipline? And not only that, it's full rules. That's the best part. I mean, full Absolutely. rules Muay Thai. Uh, we were talking the other day. We had Stitch in the studio with Scott Kent, the, you know, the the president of Lion Fights. And one of the things he asked us was, you know, how'd you get it past the commission dealing with full rules? And he's like, actually, it was a lot easier than you think. A and that's what, you know, I think that was one of the things that scared a lot of people was bringing full rules Muay Thai in because of the violence, because of the... I don't know. Just it—it it is brutal, dude. You're talking about your—we were talking about your girl earlier, Tiffany Van Seuss, and you know she had one of the most devastating knockouts I saw in, in a long time in her last Lion Fight appearance. You know, real, real tough, and uh, I'm really looking forward to tonight's fight. Uh, give us a prediction for your main event. Uh, you know, that's a really uh, interesting matchup for me, especially. You know, I fought Simon twice. Well, so, there's no question that me, Simon Marcus, Arthur Levin, Steve Wakeley, and the top four, you know, and, uh, I've had, I'm off a loss, I need to you know, work my way back up, but I'm definitely really interested in this fight, so, there's a lot of big fights, and, uh, I match up with Simon, and, uh, with uh, Arthur, we have a similar style, Simon has a really traditional Muay Thai style, super strong, incredibly strong in the punch, uh, very technical in the punch, um, I think 
Yeah, what, what's so exciting about Lion Fights and the fact that, I mean, you, you mentioned uh, Artem, you mentioned, you're bringing up Simon Marcus, yourself, Kevin Ross, Tiffany Van Seuss. Uh, last time, uh, Scott was, you know, amazing. They bring in Yatsen Clyde Fairtex. I mean, you're bringing in the best Muay Thai fighters from around the world to fight here for Lion Fights. Uh, you you got to think that the sky's the limit right now for Lion Fight. Oh, for sure. You know, the, uh, the reaction by the fans for the last card they had was incredible, and this one's going to be even bigger, and the next one's going to be even bigger when I come back. And, uh, and, uh, uh, Lion Fight Tennis. Okay. Nice, and, uh, nice. And, you know, the sports is going to keep growing and growing, and the fans are going to fall in love with it. Excellent. Well, J Joe, anybody else got anything for Joe? I know he's got a busy night planned out. All these pe fans over here sitting there taking pictures with everybody. We've actually got Mike from Lion Fight down here signing up for the newsletter. If you sign up for the newsletter today, come down right now to the Hard Rock. You have a chance to win an autographed pair of the new Lion Fight gloves from tonight's winner in the main event. So before you go, Joe, give us a prediction. Simon Marcus, Artem Levin, who walks away, first light heavyweight champion of Lion Fight. I'll give you two predictions. Excellent, excellent. Looking forward to it. Joe, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Sorry for the wait. Thanks so much for putting up with <laughs> the technical difficulties. <laughs> We've had quite a few of them, you know. It, it's tough here when you're doing a live remote and you've got so many people, so many things going on here at the Hard Rock. I know, Billy, you're a big fan of music and you got Def Leppard next week starting their their uh, oh, little, little, the hard, little, residency. Oh, uh, residency. My, my 80s uh, hair metal uh, soul comes out. Yeah, so that's going to be great here at the joint. Yeah. For, I think it's like two or three weeks or something like that. It's going to be good. Oh, actually, wait, Joe, before we let you go, I want one question. Tomorrow night, GSP Diaz, what goes down? I think it's going to be an incredible fight. I think Diaz shocks the world. And, uh, no one's giving it. Like, somebody said it was like 5 to 1. 5 to 1 underdog. Yeah, insane. yeah that, insane? see, and that's what I think is so interesting because when this fight first got booked last year, and then the whole thing went down with Diaz not showing up and he right. got pulled from the card. Diaz was actually, I think, in a, uh, was only a two to one underdog when that fight was booked and as we were getting close to it. And now it's a year later, and I don't know if it's because Diaz is coming, or actually two years later, but I don't know if it's because Diaz is coming off of the suspension, it, not being in the cage, or, or the loss, what it is, but five to one is absolutely ridiculous. If you're like a betting man, I mean, I know a lot of people are picking GSP to win, and the way, you know, GSP does it, wash, rinse, repeat, take down, take down, smother. But Nick Diaz is too dangerous of an opponent to be 5-1 to one underdog. I think it doesn't make any sense. Anybody could make a 5-1 to one underdog against everybody in the world. The guy's been in the sport. He's fought everybody. He started, you know, he's done so much, and I just think it's silly. If you had to make a prediction, I know, talking about tonight's fights, but tomorrow night's fights, what would your prediction be and how it would how Nick Diaz is going to beat George St. Pierre? I think, uh, I think Nick Diaz cuts George St. Pierre, takes him completely out of his game plan, and he falls apart. Wow. That, that would definitely, I think that would be something that would take GSP out of his game plan. It's not something you see very often. And, and getting back to the 5-1, to one, I mean, in a sport like mixed martial arts, when you have guys uh, like a Nick Diaz, like a George St. Pierre, 5-1 to one with all the different ways Nick can win, you got to think there's some money potentially to be made there. I mean, it, it's it's all it's like you said, it's almost insane, almost. So, so needless to say, I'm sure Joe, you're going to walk over to the sports book right now and lay some money down. <laughs> it's got to be. If I'm a betting man, I would lay it. I don't bet on my friends because it just never works out well. But <laughs> smart man, Joe does bet on himself. I do bet on myself. <laughs> Whatever possible. <laughs> so yeah, that is a, a risky, risky move. I don't. Nobody bet. Nobody bet. Yeah, time. so definitely. <laughs> I, and speaking of, you know, we were talking about Diaz this last couple of uh, minutes. You know, he was in absolute just amazing form yesterday during the press conference. Uh, really saw GSP getting a little aggravated, slamming the microphone down. Uh, but, you know, he even accused George of being on steroids. Yeah, <laughs> did, did anybody else notice that GSP started to pull this last week? He was really starting to clamber up a little bit. He started to Apologize for the things that he's done or not done. Or, you know, he's starting to really crack a little bit. I think it just shows a big weakness in him getting out of this game. And every time that he talks about, oh, I don't focus on that, I don't focus on that, I don't focus on that, I can tell you as a fighter, when we say that shit, we're totally focused on that. 
And I think we're trying to remind ourselves that. Yeah. And, and you brought up a good point, like yesterday when uh, when when George kind of leaned over the podium and was like, "You think I'm scared of you?" For a, a world champion to say that, to even have that like enter your brain, is in his head. Yeah, a little bit. Now the question, you know, the question remains is, is that gonna you know kind of carry over into Saturday? That is a you know a risky proposition, as Billy said, to put your money on something. You know, there was another fight, if I remember. Uh, I think it looked, two guys named Anderson Silva and Chael Sonnen where everybody thought, oh, Anderson Silva's out of character as well. I just basically think it's it's the pre-fight. It's George getting himself ready for the battle that he has on Saturday night. I, I don't, I can't see him getting out of his game in this fight. But same thing was said about Anderson Silva, and look what he did in that second fight with Chael Sonnen. So that, that, that is a good point. You know, what was, what was really funny is, uh, you know, Anderson, uh, not Anderson. I'm sorry. George St. Pierre has been doing the media rounds all all week. He was on. Uh, one of my new favorite shows, Jay Moore Sports, and he's talking to Jay Moore, and Jay asked him, is this the most you've ever been disrespected leading into a fight? And uh, George was like, absolutely not. This is, this is, in my opinion, this is what always happens. If, if you want it, I could actually give you a list of who hasn't disrespected me leading up to a fight. He says it's only been three. Out of his, what is this, the ninth title fight for George St. Pierre? Something like that. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. So this is, he said only three people were not disrespectful to him. And that was Tiago Alves, Jake Shields, and Matt Serra. Well, all I can say is thank God Nick Diaz saved that conference call in the build up to the fight because the first question on that conference call a couple weeks ago, George no sold the fight. There had been all the build up to, oh, I'm in, you know, he disrespected me and I'm going to put a beating on him and all that stuff. Now, granted, Dana said that, but, but George was kind of opening up leading into the fight. And the conference call starts, and it's crickets. And then Nick comes on, you and know what I mean, and does, the Nick, and does the Nick Diaz thing. And, and what did you think about the, the whole Nick with the, uh, you know, uh, answering questions for George when George was asked by the media, are you pampered? And George is about to answer, and he's like, you better effing be pampered. I mean, with all that money, I'd be pampered. I'd have someone give me a manicure every day. You know, just went off. It, it's just been an absolute, he is selling the fight very, very well. I well, thought it was hilarious to find out after the, GSP's dark place. <laughs> how is MF or, how is MF or not universal? Like, how do you mistake that? Yeah, it pretty much means the same. Every, well, not for nothing. It's the same way that a cigarette's called a fag in England. And, you know, and if you're not aware of that and somebody says that here, you know, you go over there, you call somebody a fag, they're like, oh, okay, he's a cigarette. You know, it happens. Surely he's watched American yeah, TV. Yeah, because we say mother F on television George all the time out here. George knows what it means. Uh, oh, okay. All right, we're getting the signal here. We're getting the signal here. Tiff is ready to come on. Got She's the real got start coming we, on. I better go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> another, another member of team can't stop can't crazy. Can't stop crazy. <laughs> Tell us what, what with can't stop what? Can't stop crazy. Nice, nice. Joe, thanks www. again. www.can'tstopcrazy.com. <laughs> you can go on YouTube and it's can't stop crazy live. On and and check it out seriously. Some of the the best videos you guys do. That do really excellent really stuff, excellent work. Man. Joe, always a pleasure, Thanks man. So much. We look fight forward fight. to seeing you back yeah. inside the ring. Lion Fight 10. Lion Fight's 10. Going to see it. Going to love it. Check it out, everybody. Joe Schilling. Dude, this is su such a great night. Look at all the people here. Lining yeah, up, we, getting it, ready. You got, you got uh, all the stars right here. Kevin Ross, Tiffany Timebomb. Kevin, welcome back. How you doing today? What's up, brother? Put the headphones on. Do a check, check, check. Check, check. How you doing there? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. You know, uh, we we had you on last time, Kevin Ross, one of the most recognizable American Muay Thai fighters around. It was your first fight back after after like a year and a half of uh, yet surgery? How did it feel to be back in there? Oh, it feels great, man. Uh, getting that first one out of the way still had a lot of rust. You know, uh, I know most people look at it and think I'm back in my own way, but I, I can feel it. I can see it. I was still. Uh, Well, one of, did you get to see it? I mean, I know you got to watch it afterwards on Access TV. 
W what did you think, uh, you know, Pat Militic, I mean, you know, great, one of the legends in combat sports, talking about how pumped he was to see that you were on the car because he wanted to see the master at, at, at work. I mean, that's a, that's a high compliment. Yeah, you know, uh, he actually came up to me, um, I believe it was at the weigh-in, and he came in to turn to himself and told me that he was a big fan of mine, and it really surprised me. I was like, I've always surprised me. How do you even know who I am? Like, I mean, now that it's on TV, but before this, you know, other than like people like doing research on YouTube and stuff like that, like, it's, like, it was surprising to me. And not only that, I mean, to, to hear Pat actually took a pay cut so that so that he could be one of the commentators for this. Because, you know, I didn't even realize this, that Pat was an American Muay Thai champion at one time. Yeah, yeah you know, so that, that was definitely uh, great to see. But uh, no longer a year and a half time in between fights. Now you're, you're back in there. You're, you're happy for the quick turnaround? Yeah, you know, uh, for me, it, it, I like fighting. You, you mentioned the rust. Like, uh, how long did it take? Because you, I mean, you looked like you came out and you were just in re in top form. It didn't look like you missed a beat. No, I mean, you know, when I say rust, I mean, it might have just been a small fraction of the I mean, I went out there and I started fighting the rest. I mean, I felt good right away, but there was just a few things. Um, you know, like I said, more, more so combinations. I mean, maybe a little bit of more distance. So it wasn't quite where I wanted it. And I, you know, I was kind of forced to Uh, you, you looked very impressive, and uh, now you got to fight tonight, Bernie Mendita. Tell us a little bit about Bernie and uh, what we should expect here. Uh, you should expect fireworks. Um, I know when it comes to fight, I've seen only a few clips, but I know that he's scrapping. Is that tough? You know, you just say, I, I've seen just a few clips of him. Not knowing much about your opponent when you have to step in there with him? I, I, I like the, the new do. No more purple hair? <laughs> uh, you know, I always like to change it up. And, uh, you know, every fight, I always I, I try to do something new, and then I shave it off and, you know, those time. So, uh, like Basically, that. whatever brings him the most luck, that's what he goes with the next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, uh, it's, it's fun for me to do that different hairstyles, but it also gets old, too. Everyone's like, hey, this is like, uh, like nothing, man. And I hate throwing my hair out, too. It's such a pain. Well, you, you actually, you, you kind of, uh, I'm going to say it was a joke. You made a joke a little while ago that you're surprised that people will recognize you anywhere. But uh, I'm sure that's changed now. I mean, you know, uh, Muay Thai now on American TV with Access signing a deal. Lion Fights, you guys are bringing in the greatest fighters from around the world. I mean, y you're noticing some change. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, when people recognize me now, it's, it, it makes a lot more sense to big and it was great to see the crowd reaction that you received obviously you know you were a Las Vegas, uh, Las Vegas resident for quite a while how is uh, California treating you Safer, <laughs> cleaner, <laughs> cleaner for sure. Just nicer all around, you know, more relaxing. Just a different uh, environment. Uh, stage in my career to kind of make that adjustment and uh, you know, kind of help me outside the ring as well. 
Uh, great. Um, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, no, you were you were talking a little bit about, you know, obviously you are a veteran. You fought across the United States. Muay Thai is big internationally, but Lion Fights is kind of creating this. Obviously, we talked about the Access TV deal, but Fight Weekend in Vegas, an annual schedule, top-level fighters. Um, compared to the other American shows, kind of, what does this all, you know, add up to? What do you, how do you see this going? Um, how do I see the Access? Yeah, well, it's comparatively to the other shows you've been in in America and, 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 and the, in the future of Muay Thai, maybe in Vegas and, and uh, America in general. Well, they are really the first people to consistently do it right, you know, and, and get all the bases covered correctly. Right. There's been some really great shows, and they've done a lot of uh, really good things, but they were always missing a few pieces here and there. There wasn't media coverage or, or there wasn't the right fights on the card or they didn't promote it correctly. The Lions fight has consistently since day one put on good matchups, uh, you know, uh, publicized it correctly, now have got it on TV, you know, like I said, they just got all their bases covered, and they're, they're doing everything right, and it's, it's just a pleasure to watch and be a part of it. And, and now tonight, we have the inaugural belt yeah. being brought out for that. Obviously, the two huge name fighters, but the belt, yeah. and that, you know, you can't, uh, you can't really put into terms exactly how much that means. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, it brings legitimacy to the organization once they, uh, they get that world title. And you brought up doing it right, and that's a good point. It took nine events yeah. to get us to this belt in this moment. That's a that's a good way to run a promotion. Yeah, it takes time. You can't you can't build a, uh, an organization overnight, and that was the mistake so many of these other cards did. Oh yeah. They had the one one show, one and done kind of thing going. You know, you got to lose money to make money, and build it from the ground up, build up the uh, the fan base, the fighter base, and that's what they've done, and, and it's paid off. Yeah, we, we were talking about, you know, kind of like the ABC belts, obviously, you know, WBO, WBC, uh, well, there are so many of them. Lion Fight standing out, and like, you know, we had talked to Scott and about legitimizing it and putting out your own belt, and you know, and, and the woman standing next to you right now, I expect to be the first Lion Fights woman's champion, uh, you know. Uh, I've, yeah, we're gonna have to do that in a second. Tiffany will be joining us in just one second because of uh, our headphone situation here. This place is packed and it's like we're spreading. I think, it's, I think it's the background now noise just taking over. Like people are just swarming in and uh, it's drowning us out. Yeah, yeah. So what, what we want to do is actually, uh, I know you have a fight tonight and uh, you know, there's not a lot of time leading in. You got to get those hands wrapped, get ready. Um, don't want to ask for predictions or anything like that, but what I want to know is, you know, fighting here in Vegas, and we were talking to Scott earlier, and he was talking about branching out and, and moving all, uh, across the country, but you fought everywhere, yeah. all over the world. Where's your favorite fight? Where was the fav your most favorite place to fight? Um, well, it's easy to say Thailand, because that's the motherland. Just a history there. Yeah, but other than that, I kind of have to say Mexico. They, really? It's, it's just so much fun to fight in front of Mexico. Because they, they love fighting. There's no booing. As long as you're going out there to fight, it doesn't matter if you win or lose. As long as you show hard, and you're trying to put it on a good show. They just love. They eat it up, and it, you really feel appreciated. And it makes you want to fight that much more. And that, that's what makes this show really great. Is when the fans appreciate what you're doing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's great, you know, that's, they, they love any type of fighting. It could be Muay Thai, it could be MMA, it could be cockfighting. They love it in Mexico. So, but Kevin, thank you so much for joining us. I know you got the fight. Get your hands wrapped, Thanks, get ready, and best of luck tonight. Best of luck tonight, and of course, naturally, Tiffany is going to be joining us as well, who's been patiently, patiently waiting, waiting on the side. We have had a, a bit of a shortage of microphones tonight. Microphones, headsets. We must apologize. We do a little test, Tiff. Can you hear everybody? Yeah, we I, can hear you. Just got to talk right into the microphone. <laughs> yeah. That close, yes. And Tiffany, you, last time you came here to the Hard Rock, you ended the night viciously. Put on a show. H how'd it feel? It felt great. It, it felt, felt, like, felt like I could spin the ring on my finger and then spin it like a Harlem Globetrotter, you know, just well, on my finger. Well, one of the things that was interesting, because the fight that I saw beforehand, uh, I think it was against Jerry Seid, you... You looked so dominating. You absolutely controlled that fight everywhere it went. And then in this last fight, you you, you controlled the first round, did what you wanted. Second round, it looked like, you know, it looked like it got a little tough in there in the second round. And then you just came back from adversity and landed one of the most beautiful head kicks I have seen in a long time. Thank you. Yeah. Um, my last opponent, Alexa, she is a very experienced, uh, a veteran of the sport. So close to like 30 professionals. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, with that experience, she was able to make adjustments and, and kind of slow me down a little bit there in the second. But then, you know, the same, with, I wouldn't say a lack of experience on my end, but, you know, with a great, great corner. And, um, and I've been doing martial arts since I was a little kid. Um, I was able to make adjustments to her adjustments as well. And, and become a, I loved one of the greatest lines she dropped afterwards when Pat was interviewing into the ring, and you said, left leg cemetery, like Mir Mirko Prokop, you know, brought, a, brought back some who, old memories. Who actually fought and won today in Zagreb. Really? So, yeah, in the K-1 Zagreb, so. No, he actually won a controversial decision, but hey, win's a win. Win's a win, absolutely. You know, Tiffany, one thing I wanted to ask you about, um, obviously with the rise of Ronda Rousey, uh, women in fight sports... The spotlight's been turned on to you. Do you feel kind of added pressure? Do you feel that attention being garnered more now, especially because of the Access TV deal, or is it kind of business as usual? Uh, I feel a little bit more attention, but as far as pressure goes, no, not, no, no extra pressure whatsoever. I mean, I would do this if, if nobody watches. I did do this when nobody watched it, and now it's great that it is finally getting some, some recognition in the TV deal. Um, so, I mean, I'll showcase my skills to one or two people. I'll showcase it to one or two million people. Well, you, you do Muay Thai, but you also, you've dabbled in MMA before in the past. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you I know. wrestle a little bit, a little bit of Jiu-Jitsu. And you, 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 you've had amateur fights? Yeah, a couple With three? Three, three amateur? Two. two? Two, okay. And I, I've seen some of those, and you, you look really impressive. And In fact, actually, la, la, in your last fight, I thought you were going to go down on Alexa. I could bang her out after you dropped her. <laughs> but, you know, I mean... Shark Week, so maybe it's like sharks. My favorite week of the uh, my favorite week of the year. <laughs> no, but I, I watched the reruns on Netflix. Like I'm, I was sitting, I was sitting in my uh, in the tub cutting weight, watching Shark Week on, on Netflix. Like you know, nights and nights. What, what an easy way to cut weight, weight though, right? Oh, You're just relaxing. Easiest, easiest. I've got a great nutritionist, um, Eric Chodichin, nutritionforlife.com. My diet is on point, and then just that little last couple pounds of water that I need to get out and jump in the tub. And Nice. Now, is it hard? Because uh, you still work at the UFC gym? I do, yeah. So you're still a trainer over there? Yeah. Or is it hard when you have to battle working on, like, you know, you're, you're out of the house and dealing with that and maybe having to eat on the run sometimes? Is it hard to cut weight like that? Um, not really, because I, luckily I live really close to the gym. So, like, if I get a break, like an hour break, I can run home but I can still eat well. But if I'm Bag it, right? She dropped Tupperware. She dropped the Tupperware. So. Wow, she went old school on us over there, Tiff. I have an old soul, that's what I'm told. Uh, you know, uh, what do you do? What do you like to do? You know, you talk about watching Shark Week and some of those specials. What, what do you like to do in your free time? Oh, uh, I love being at the beach. I surf. I ride my skateboard. cruise on my bike. What kind of board you got? Skateboard. Uh, skateboard? Yeah. I have two. I have a flex deck. It's cool. cool. It has LED lights on the bottom. Look at me nerding out right now. Uh, I ride that one at night, and then uh, I just got a really nice new Sector 9 longboard, just a cruiser, bumps and hills sometimes. So, so you watch Shark Week and then you go surfing? Uh, I try not to do that too. Oh, okay. I, I was going to say, I couldn't even get in the bathtub when I was a kid, I thought Jaws was in there. You know, it, it's funny, we talk about what some people do to like, you know, relax or whatever. You go out surfing. That is relaxing. It's like Yeah, Luke Rockhold is a big, big advocate big, big, of, of surfing surf. and, and skating. In between, which I, another thing you know he had said is like, he goes, listen, man, getting punched in the face is nothing like slamming your face down on the concrete. Well, I don't get crazy yeah. like that, but yeah, definitely not. Yeah, it was funny because uh, Luke was talking about it, and, and you mentioned Netflix and Shark Week. What you got to do is, you know, when you're relaxing next time, you need to watch the Bones Brigade DVD. Amen. I, I don't know if you've seen it. Bones Brigade is old school, like 1980s, early 90s, Powell Peralta, Tony Hawk, okay, his, yeah. Steve Caballero, Mike McGill, his old school team. And don't forget Rodney Mullen. Rodney Mullen, one of the most gen just greatest, smartest minds in the world. And, and it just really showed the way skating grew into a culture and the way those guys did it. So Def like definitely like check it out. All the Z-Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, exactly. You know, Stacey Perelta from yeah. Dogtown and Z. That was a great, great documentary as well. I think the three greatest documentaries I've ever seen are done by Stacey Perelta. Yep. I, I need some Riding Giants. Yep. I'm sure you've seen that one. Um, one of the greatest things ever. 
Um, but let's get talk to the fights, okay? You got to fight. Oh. I was loving the Stacey Peralta documentary. I, I was, uh, yeah, we, we could do a whole different thing. But tonight, you got to fight against Natalie Yip. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I got to fight against Natalie Yip. She's, uh, she's real tall. Which, um, I'm always used to being the shorter fighter, but uh, not this much shorter. So it's got to be something interesting, something new. But um, definitely prepared for it. I feel like we've got a good, strong game plan going into this fight, as always. Well, what was interesting in your last fight, you had expressed interest afterwards in facing Lucy Payne. Who was also very, very tall. I think six, yeah, very, very, six feet. very, very tall. We'll call her five foot twelve. Well, is there now? Is, is there beef there? What's with that? Why did you want to fight her? Uh, they had expressed some interest in the fight, and uh, I won't turn down a fight with anybody. But just like the timing, and so there were some things going around on Facebook. You know, these keyboard warriors. They'll, they'll I, I know them well. Oh yeah, they'll, they'll hide behind their computers and say this or that, whatever. Oh, take me, we'll take the fight. She's scared of how tall she is. Like, I'm not scared of anybody. Yeah. Say, I have a ladder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a stepping ladder. Wait, what, did, really what, <laughs> what did we see last? <laughs> what did we see last week? It was everybody was talking about Mark Hunt and Stefan Struve, and there was yep. there's no way Hunt's gonna be able to land that punch. And what did he do? He jumped and I punched it. I was watching that fight and I was like, you, you go, shorty. That's gonna be me next week. <laughs> I, I love how Hunt at the way in. I, I love how Hunt at the way in stood with his hands behind his back. Yeah. And it was uh, just it really like accentuated the differences that much more, and then he broke his jaw. Yeah. The I, next day. I, I think it's hilarious, and and anyone who says that Joe Silva does not have a sense of humor booking that fight. I mean, he it's booked it's Sean McCorkle <laughs> and um, and uh, Stefan Struve as a co-main event in Indianapolis. J- Joe Silva has a sense of humor. <laughs> he certainly yeah, does. Yeah. Hey, but that you know why though? That there was a lot of heat in that fight with those two. They actually, yeah. the two of them did one of the best booking or best uh, lead-ups for a fight. The trash talk. That's true. They that's had. true. So, but uh, I'm really, I'd like to see the Lucy Payne fight. You know, I was watching a little bit of her fight. And she's a, she's a cute girl, too. And, and, you know, we've talked about this the last time. You've got that, you know, when Brian mentioned Ronda Rousey and the nerves behind it and kind of the, you know, what leads comes with that is you've got it. You've got your the fighting ability. You've got the look. You've got the attitude, the spunk. I mean, I think it would be a fight, a fun fight to watch. And you got beauty versus beauty. Book Thank it you. that way. Thank you. Yeah, if, 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 if you need to learn, go and check her highlight video on YouTube. I watched that last night, and I was like, oh, my God. I yeah. mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say other than I hope you can uh, cash in on the whole women's fighting thing because, I mean, with all the eyes on it, with what you bring to the cage and a girl like Rhonda, um, you bring that added viciousness. Let's just put it that way. Thank you. Yeah. I'm only, I'm only mean for 15 minutes at a time if it takes that long. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, the, it had to be uh, a nice accomplishment, or at least it had to feel good. I don't know if you saw this on HDNet the week after your fight. Yeah, you yeah. had won number one knockout of the week. I yeah. mean, that had to yeah, feel good. That, that, that was so super cool. I was stoked on that. I just was like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Like, of all like, the guys and stuff, and then like you see me in my pink skirt, like number one knockout is Awesome. And super cool. It was like totally girl power. It, absolutely. And not only that, you, you had now, that's the second time in a row that Lion Fights has, after their fight, they've been not, you know, obviously the last one before that was when Joe lost. But that that one knockout, you won knockout. Can't stop crazy. Can't stop crazy. No matter what. Can't stop, won't stop. We're, we're, now, you, you're also a part of t- uh, Can't Stop Crazy, right? Best team in the world. Best team in the world. Tell tell everyone where they can find you because we know you got to get your hands wrapped, get ready for this fight tonight. So tell everyone where they can find you, Facebook, social media, any, anywhere they can get in touch with you. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at, at Tip Time Bomb. Uh, Instagram is the same. I just started that. I'm getting better about it. Um, and my, my athlete page on Facebook is Tiffany Time Bomb Van Seuss. Nice, nice. Yeah, Instagram, I, it just does not work for me. I have an old school Blackberry, like 1990 call. They, yeah, want, they want their phone back. It's just not working there. So, but thank you so much for your time. You Best of luck guys. tonight. Thank you so much. Tiffany, good luck. Thank Great you seeing you against me. Yeah. Thanks, Tiffany. Absolutely. Thanks. World champion, Tiffany Van Soos. And it, it's, that's the way you pronounce it, Van Soos. Van Soos. Dutch, Dutch style. Like All right. Nesto. <laughs> yes, Dutch style, as Boss, Boss Rutten uh, right. always says. So, yeah, exciting night. We just had Tiffany, Kevin. Oh, you got to come down here to the Hard Rock. We got Michael over here signing people up for the newsletter. Come on down, sign up today, and you have a chance to win. Look at these. Let's show, show these gloves. gloves. 
these brand new Lion Fights gloves signed by the winner of tonight's main event of uh, Arden Levin and Simon Marcus. So, you know. What a fight that's going to be. What a fight. And, you know, Ryan, you had talked about it earlier. The workouts. When you saw these two guys hitting bags, working the pads, it's, it's I mean, it's nice when you see MMA guys yeah. do it. Yeah. But when you see trained Muay Thai fighters working those pads, it's another level. MMA is a beautiful sport in the fact that the dedication and the time it takes. Um, those guys also spend their time and dedication on five or six other disciplines. Tomorrow, or sorry, tonight, you're going to see two guys that have put in hours, months, years, decades in one area. And when I'm, I mean, for the, those of you that know these two guys, you know they can throw. But if you don't know them or if you're going to watch XS TV tonight, same thing I said with Tiffany, go to YouTube, look at their highlight videos. And if you know anything about fighting, within 30 seconds, you're going to be blown away at their stand-up skills. I mean, it's... Isn't YouTube the greatest thing it ever? Is. It seriously is. You can just find anything on YouTube. Anything you want. I, I do it on a consistent basis. But, you know, <laughs> I'm serious. I'm I, love, you, I love it. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. YouTube, not you porn. Okay. <laughs> is this a stab at comedy? Listen, I'm going to tell you. Hey, I'll be here all day. No, but here, here's the thing. You know, you bring up a good point. And we talk about the rise. And this is kind of the point I was making before. You know, boxing, I don't think, will ever take a back seat. But we talk about disciplines. Because of the explosion of mixed martial arts, maybe now will be a time when some of these disciplines get the spotlight they deserve as well. That have created this one great art form that now we call MMA. And that's, and, and that's kind of what I was sitting on Joe about. Yeah. As far as the, yeah, that, the spotlight being on, you know, fight sports, is this going to open a door to be like, you know, the passion of the niche? Like, we always had hardcore MMA fans. Well, that became a, a new sport. And it, and it grabbed this, you know, society by the, the balls, so to speak. You know, I don't think there's any reason Muay Thai can't, you know, fill that role to some extent to, like you said, capitalize on the spotlight. Imagine we went actually back to the beginning and some of the discipline sports became very popular again to watch because of the oh, rise, of, rise of MMA. And then we went back to the beginning and actually put discipline against discipline well, that, that against was, each other again, which would be pretty cool if we had specialty fights like that. I mean, sometimes you do. I mean, you got them with some fights that, that land up when you get a striker versus a grappler. But cause the thing is, is today everybody knows everything. Right. And that's but the reason, and, and I, 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 I got to be honest, Joe Rogan, love him or hate him, he said it best. Martial arts has evolved more in the last 20 years than it has in the last 700 years it, because of mixed martial arts. Because and of Bruce Lee. Yeah, well, <laughs> because of Bruce Lee. Yeah, well, yeah. He was yeah. the first to adapt yeah. that mentality. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And they thought he was crazy. He was chastised for it as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. I mean, if you watch uh, Enter the Dragon, opening scene, he's got MMA gloves. Absolutely. Yeah, he does. I mean, and the whole rhetoric behind the, the what, he would, what he would spit and kind of just the way he approached life. It's definitely the basis for uh, George St. Pierre and Anderson Silva. Nice, smile on your face, go and break it the next day. Yeah, there's, that's definitely their mentality. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I, you know, I got to say one thing about you know Muay Thai and, and what we're watching tonight. And, and that, like I said, come on down to the Hard Rock. Okay, you have Lion Fight 9 tonight. Going to be an insane card. Artem Levin against Simon Marcus for the very first. Hey, look at that. There's Andrew Dice Clay walking by right there. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So, yeah, like I said, come on down to the hard right. Got to check these fights out. They're going to be amazing. Go get Dice. Get them on come, here. Come see Mike. Mike's going to be uh, handing out, uh, or you sign up for the Lion Fight Promotions newsletter. You will get uh, yourself named and put in the drawing yep. to win a signed pair of autographed gloves from the winner of tonight's main event for the very first ever Lion Fight light heavyweight title. Okay. Now, like I was saying really quickly, because Dice interrupted me there, walking by. I mean, you see Andrew Dice play, you gotta, you gotta call it out. He sees a mic and he, I mean, yeah. it's in his blood. You gotta, you gotta call him out. Yep. So, but uh, you know, to one of the things that you, Billy, you bring up boxing. You talk about how, like, you know, boxing fans when they generally look at mixed martial arts, they're, they're not too fascinated with the ground. They, they don't know what it is they're seeing. You know, when you when you have two educated grappling fans or mixed martial arts fans, they know what it is they're looking at. When you see a fight like a John Fitch versus Damian Maya, you understand the the mastery or the majesty that's going on there. You understand, it, okay? But some fans may not. With Muay Thai, that is not an issue, okay? You have eight things that are going flying, and that is both your hands, both your knees, both your elbows, and both your legs. They are going. It's the, the art of eight limbs. Absolutely, and, and we touched on this earlier, which I wanted to talk to Joe about, but well, he didn't get the chance, and 
With Muay Thai, you do have governing bodies. The WBO, the WBC. Now, when you hear those words, what pops in your head? Boxing. Absolutely. After you say boxing, what pops in your head? It's a rhetorical. I mean, it, a lot of different things kind of being the answer. The but alphabet city corruption. Ex boxing. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and, and, and here's my point. When you have a, a, a company of promotion like Lion Fights, when they're differentiating themselves from that, it's, it's very similar to the UFC. It's the Lion Fight belt. No three, you know, letter, you know, the alphabet city. Yeah, it, it just, it, 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 to, to be honest, there's so many of those champions, and I, I, I might catch flack for this, they really don't matter. It is so hard to keep up with. Aside from the top, top tier, it's really hard when you get into WBA, WBO, WBC. So, it's a, in my opinion, waiting nine fights, putting these two guys, you know, in the main event of Lion Fights 9, I think it's genius. You're Absolutely. establishing yourself away from all the dirty things that may go along with your title. And we, we had talked to Scott the other night about it. Scott Kent is one of the most hands-on promoters I've ever seen. I mean, Artem Levin flies in from Russia. He picks him up at the airport, takes him around the strip, takes him out to dinner. Does the same thing for Simon Marcus the next day. It's just he well, I take him out to dinner too. Well, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You no, sir. Did you like some food? Weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please don't hurt me. Yeah, absolutely. So we got lion fights tonight on Access TV. If you are not in Las Vegas. I'm, I'm sorry that you're not, because it is absolutely <laughs> If beautiful. you are not in Las Vegas, get on a plane now and get to Vegas immediately, because Lion Fights is happening tonight. You don't want to miss it. That, but, but if you can't, you do have the option of, of watching it. on TV. Access like, TV tonight. Before, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas was a slogan. That was actually the slogan, but it was a little too long. So. <laughs> And then, of course, naturally, we're talking to the people who live here in Vegas. Yeah, this is an amazing here. opportunity. Uh, check out the fights. They're going to be great tonight. But also, there's a star-studded cast of people that are just walking around. Uh, as Phil said before, Andrew Dice Clay walked by. Uh, some very attractive women walking in and out as well. And But I, I'm telling you, a who's who of not only Muay Thai fighters and people in the um, Muay Thai community, but also people in the mixed martial arts community as well. And later in the show, later tonight, we're supposed to be joined by some big names, names in MMA. I don't know if I should be dropping them on the floor at the moment. Name dropping. Did you name, drop that? Name dropping. Uh, yeah, that was me. But uh, they will be joining us later as well. So it's just a lot of great energy happening here. We can't say it enough. Ab absolutely not. It's going to be uh, a star-studded night. In fact, most of the guests that we do have the rest of the evening, because, you know, the the doors just opened up an hour ago, but the the... Uh, undercard right. fight, which we, we have about four, six, five amateur fights coming up, starting right now. So now, you know, when when the main card is starting, now all of a sudden we can't have these Muay Thai fighters on. So we're uh, lucky enough to have one of the greatest PR people in the world working with Lion Fights, and that's Jen Wang. Well, uh, Jen, Jen has actually just put together a stellar list of mixed martial arts fighters to come by here and join us before the fight. I mean, does it? If I just told you the names of people that we know will be here uh, tonight, I know Anthony Pettis is on his way. Showtime is, is here tonight. Uh, you got the Jinquani brothers, Anthony and Chitty Jinquani, Frank Mir. I know Lieto Machida will be stopping by the event tonight. I don't know if he will be able to come onto the show, but we do know that if you want to come down and see MMA fighters in the audience. By the way, that by the way, the person that you just saw step in front of the camera just giving me a note. I'm very excited about some of the people that are going to be stopping by. So, uh, excellent. Well, that was Chen Wank, uh, PR extraordinaire. By the way, <laughs> probably the reason the, all these sports are on the map right now is because of Chen Wank and her work and her phenomenal work and, in this business. And not only that, I have to say, Billy, Billy is Ryan. I don't. I know you and Billy have met each other a few times. Billy is one of the most charming men I've ever met. Like he, he, he actually almost charmed the pants off of me once. <laughs> just, just, I don't even. I didn't know. But it was how a couple of drinks but, and but it was late. And <laughs> he, he actually got Jen to, to come on and do an interview. And Jen doesn't talk to anybody. She's like, no, no interview. She's the Joe she's, Silva. She, she, we're almost, go, is, we're almost going Joe like Silva this right now, PR. but I, I don't. I, we're almost like this right now verbally, but I don't. I don't know if Jen will go for it. You know, but uh, she is. She is amazing, and what she's doing with this organization here, Lion Fights, is incredible, and it's something that all the fight fans out there should be thankful for. Jen Wank, go check her out on Facebook. <laughs> go harass her. Follow her on Twitter. So if you want more Muay Thai, more Lion Fights. And, and that's what we are going to see, because we talked about how Lion Fights is running things, Scott being the hands-on type of promoter he is, and 
be the growth. It's gonna be there. And when you see, and you know, I was making a joke earlier about people who don't don't like the the ground of the portion of the fight. It's true. The, Every single one of these fights is non-stop action from beginning to end. They've got the talent, but what's almost more important, and, and Tiffany and Joe brought this up, is the ship that they run. Absolutely. The, they did it the right way. And I can't and I'm not I'm not pushing the hard sell here. It's clean. You know what I mean? They they, they run a, they run it in Vegas with a with a with a schedule where people can keep up with what they're doing. Um you know, it, it, with all the jank promotions out there and all your regional, I love that word, jank. well, and all the regional <laughs> and all the regional promotions, it's just it's 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 refreshing to see someone doing it right, and that goes for our society. I don't, I mean, I, it doesn't even have to be fights. It's just your boss who you work with, you know, that your superior, yeah, someone doing something with logic and reason where you're like, oh my god, this this should work. He this gets is a, it. This is exactly. This is a quality product. How many times? And I brought this up earlier. How many times do you see him rush out a belt? Absolutely. Where they're like, oh, we got this belt, and they spend $700 on their stupid belt that the, no one will ever see again. And you know what I mean? We are nine fights in with a mega fight to introduce their belt. Yep. Now, by the way, that was some pretty cool belt that I saw. We saw at the studio the I other day. I missed it. Oh, oh you big. missed it. Yeah, it's, a big, I, it's a big-ass belt. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big it was, it was big, but I, I wonder how much those belts, that's a, that's a good point. How much Not does cheap. it cost to make well, one of those belts? It, 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 like he says, you know, you, you have these jank promotions that are bringing that stuff up, and, and they, they waited nine events to come out and yep. put on, a, bring in the two of the best fighters in the world to fight for it, legitimize it, make sure it means something and they did it with a fight that's tried to be made by four four or five other times overseas in russia and and, and thailand or china i mean this is this is a big fight they're bringing to las vegas yeah, when we so were we're not kidding when you say get down here and watch this fight yeah when we, were told, when we were told simon marcus was was gonna maybe come on before he stepped in and got everything right. ready i was just first off i'm like how how is he gonna come on here with just the you know like uh you know um Joe was saying, you know, you have that mentality. Right. You know, anyone who tells you they don't, they're lying. You know, and Tiffany, very relaxed, but you know behind those eyes, there's a killer in there. <laughs> well, she was very relaxed last time she came on and the show as well. Killer. And we were kind of like, oh, you realize you have to get ready for a fight, and she went out there and brutalized. Yeah, and well, know. the last time we saw Simon in here, he was the villain going against Joe. I'd like to see how the crowd reacts, knowing what they saw last time, because he definitely gained some fans after his last two fights here in the Hard Rock. Well, and, he, and he's a North American guy. Yeah, from Canada. Yeah. And, you know, I'd like I would have liked to know now Canada, you know, with a mixed martial arts. I mean, not mixed martial arts. First off, I would have loved speaking of MMA. I would have loved to know if it's Scott this, Kent, this, Lion Fights, oh, right here, Scott. joining us right now. Scott, we were just sitting here raving, raving about Scott Kent and the way you have run Lion Fights and everything that you have done for the sport. Right here. All I know is, is that I want one of those bracelets. That's <laughs> what do I have to do to get one of those bracelets? Well, all you have to do is compliment me. Uh, last time we were at an entire restaurant and Pat Militich said, oh, I love the bracelet, so I gave him one. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be that lucky. After, but after that, I, I mean, I'm going to run out of bracelets. For <laughs> well, that, that's what we were talking about, the way you guys have just, you're doing it right. The way you're so hands-on with the fighters. We talked about how you brought Art and Levin. You were driving them around town, showing them the strip. Uh, you, how graceful you were with Yachts and Clyde coming in here, first time in America, and you're showing him around. He was like a little schoolboy. I mean, the the way you have just rolled everything out, waiting nine events for you know to to introduce your your belt. You've just done everything right from the beginning. I appreciate that. You know, we we have a great team, and and I think a lot of it comes down to personal relationships. It's like any business, you know, and. Uh, we're gonna go out and try to meet the fighters. We wanna take them out because I don't want them just to fly here from Russia and fight and fly back. You know, this is Las Vegas. We need to let them see what the fight capital is all about. I want them to enjoy their time while they're here, uh, as well as be able to fight on, on a top level uh, competition. Yeah. Now this is the second event that's happening on Access Television tonight. Uh, how do you feel the event is going so far, leading up to these big fights tonight? We got rave reviews about our last show at Yachts and Fly. You know, I went home and watched it. it so did I. <laughs> the quality of it, and uh, Access TV has really gotten behind what we're doing. They're doing a lot more promotional stuff, a lot more production things that uh, are starting to come a lot easier now that they're offering because they're really buying into what we're doing. Yeah, it's it's been amazing, and you you know we mentioned Yachts and Clyde. Tonight, you have, uh, you know, Artem Levin 
and Simon Marcus of, uh, and as Ryan had mentioned earlier, an event, a fight that five times has already been tried to put together. How were you able to do it? You know, I'd, I'd love to take credit for it, guys, but Christine was really the one that did it. And uh, if you would have asked me six months ago if we could have put this fight together, I would have said we didn't have a shot. And, you know, I think between the, uh, the sanctioning bodies that have tried to put this thing together, the personalities and everything, we just came with a fresh approach and said, we want to see the two best light heavies fight. We'd like it to be for our inaugural uh, world title belt. And uh, they, they both accepted, so I was thrilled. Now, did you have plans prior to this mega fight at introducing a belt at this event, or was it kind of, okay, we've got these two. We couldn't ask for two better fighters to make a belt, so. That was really it. Yeah. You know, we had had those discussions in the past. Yachts and Fly, we looked at that also. But we wanted to make sure that we had the two best guys in the world. I mean, if you're going to make a statement, you get one chance to make a first impression. And everybody's been raving about this fight and looking forward to it. And uh, the belt came in. It looks magnificent. You guys saw it the other night. Uh, so we're, we're, we're thrilled. We're so blessed and honored to be able to present this to the winner tonight. Yeah, that belt is beyond bling. I mean, it's beyond. That, that is a sharp belt. I'm looking forward to seeing it unveiled, and I'm sure you know, you're know you very looking for, very much looking forward to unveiling it to the world. You know, we, we've brought up a good point before, and I don't mean to pry about this. What's the cost of creating a belt like that? The actual physical cost? Well, one million dollars. One million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> we had a handmade in Thailand. Uh, we had the best wow. uh, belt maker uh, who does all of the top championship belts for WBC, WMC quoted me a price and twins our partner was helping us with that relationship and um, yeah I, I, you know as far as what it costs they're not cheap obviously because you let's, saw it. let's play the hot cold game no <laughs> yeah I was gonna say okay let's go <laughs> 20,000 well, that, that, that's you, you, cold you're, you're bringing up a, an interesting point in saying you know it's it's not cheap okay and and running a promotion is not cheap but to run a promotion and being able to, like we talk about, the, the mega fight you have tonight, okay? Simon Marcus, Artem Levin. Artem Levin, you know, one of the best Muay Thai fighters in the world. Simon Marcus undefeated. Last time you brought in Yadsen Clyde Fairtex, who was just arguably one of the greatest Muay Thai fighters to walk the earth. How are you able to pull all these guys in? Kevin Ross, Joe Schilling. You're bringing in, not only are you bringing in the best fighters, you're bringing in the, the best of the best, the biggest names in the sport. Well, I think it goes back to our business plan. You know, in the first couple of years, we wanted to try and hone our craft, be the best at what we could do, figure out what we did well, and identify where our market is. And then once we were able to get to the hard rock, once we were able to be seriously considered for a television deal, again, knowing we had to make a splash, and God can fly with that splash, and it got us so much great press. And then, then you say, well, how do I top that? How do I follow it up? And when this fight came available, or Christine made it available, it was a no-brainer for us. And cost is kind of, you know, it's a cost and a value to everything. This is just one of those things that we have to do. You know, one thing I wanted to ask, the, you know, the promotion's there, the venue's there, the TV deals are there, and the fighters are there. What obstacles as far that you see is, is, is growing the sport in North America? What, how, what challenges do you see that, you know, face Lion Fights is to really, you know, making people grab a hold of it and maybe converting some of that MMA audience we talked about earlier? Sure, sure. Uh, I think what's extremely important is we get the kids, you know, we started the gyms, and uh, I've had numerous discussions over the last several months with, uh, you know, Duke Rufus in Milwaukee, some folks in Arizona about doing some amateur tournaments. When someone wants to do their pro debut, if they win the amateur tournaments, they can do a pro debut on one of our fights here in Las Vegas. About branching into to those jurisdictions outside of Las Vegas to spread the lion fight name and to show people what, what an amazing sport it is live. Now, the last time that we had you on the show when we were live here, of course, naturally, that was before the first broadcast on Access TV. Since then, naturally, the first show came out. This is the second one. What was the reaction like from people in the industry? And Because there was a who's who of, of not only Muay Thai fighters and Muay Thai community, but mixed martial artists as well were here. Movie celebrities. Uh, movie there was a ton of people here. Now, I see a couple of other big names walking around the building as well. Uh, who reached out to you after that and that you were kind of surprised, like, wow, look at the effect this is having? You know, there's there have been so many fighters that have come to us, uh, you know, old fighters that have been around for many, many, many years that have said, you know, we're so grateful that you are doing this, the Muay Thai is finally getting the exposure that it's never had. Uh, 
you know, tonight we got Loyola Machida is going to be here. Frank Mayer is going to be here. You know, we're going to have the... Uh, I think somebody just let the cat out of the bag. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> well, Little that's tease. the rumor anyway. Yeah. There's a few other big names coming. So uh, for those guys to contact and say they want to come to one of our events, I mean, we're, we're flattered as heck. And especially to the guys that understand what Muay Thai is, and to have them come and appreciate the level of, of, of a talent that we're bringing. Well, we always talk about that. A lot of the mixed martial artists, especially the big name guys, have a background, you know, have this background, so it, it only makes sense anyway. And they love to still come and, and watch it. You know, we were talking, all three of us before, about the discipline becoming popular again, but not only Muay Thai, but also other disciplines as well. How cool would it be to see some of the disciplines that created MMA become popular again, like this, like this is growing right now? Yeah, I think you're going to see that. I mean, MMA is, is grown so fast and so big that at some point, I think it's going to break off into little offshoots and specialties. And I think we just are lucky enough to have the best stand-up fighting specials. Absolutely. And, it, and it's really funny. You said you start at the kids, you know. You're like a pusher. But it's the right way to do it. You know, he's, he's, like, he's like Scott the pusher. He's got, but you're you getting like them young time. because... Because Billy brings, and they were t when we were talking about this, and you know when when MMA came onto the scene, it was one of those things where it was like, wow, you know, like I can learn all of the arts at once. And now the the newer kids who are learning M or are learning from MMA completely forgot. Oh wait, that 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 clinch he's got that comes from a completely different you know discipline. So you're right. You gotta start young. You gotta get them. You gotta get them hooked. Well, it comes full circle, almost like 360. You look at it. MMA was was born from other styles, yeah. other popular styles from all over the world and in different pockets of, of everyone's uh, uh, respective countries. Then MMA grew to this gigantic behemoth that we see today, and it's giving back to those individual styles where we can help build, you know, what really brought MMA to the to the forefront of, um, you know, the, the, the culture, our society. You know, I know we're getting ahead of ourselves here and, and kind of getting creative, but, but that's what we do. We get on the microphones and sometimes we just, we, got, we get a little ahead of ourselves. You know, we were talking about the possibilities before of growing these other disciplines, Muay Thai as well, uh, and having some of the other or disciplines become popular again as well. How cool would it be to see uh, fighters, almost like going back to the beginning of the UFC and putting discipline against discipline again? Is that something, I know that you, we're, we're talking Muay Thai, but would that be interesting? Uh, you know, I, I get approached with so many, so many things where guys want us to do different hybrid shows where we do MMA, we do Muay Thai, and we've always just kind of stuck with Muay Thai because we figure there's so many things out there and, and just focus on what we're doing. So I think probably in the conceivable future, we're just going to stick with Muay Thai. You know, we love it. We've got a great fan base. And I think the minute we start to dilute that or maybe separate it, I'm sure there's other guys capable of developing their sport that I want to do but yeah stick with what you know absolutely I mean, and you've done it right you've done it the perfect way and you've got an absolutely insane card here lined up not we've talked about Arm, Artem and Simon we've talked about Tiffany and, and Natalie but Kevin Ross is on the card Jason Andrada a, a local fighter here so tell us a little bit about the card and what the guys at home who aren't lucky enough to come down here to the Hard Rock and by the way if you are in Vegas come on down here to the Hard Rock Mike, our main man over here, he's got nice, beautiful set of Lion Fight gloves that will be signed by the winner of the Le Artem Levin and Simon Marcus fight. So, but tell us a little about the rest of the card. Um, Howard Sasbrapa, former Thai champion, uh, one of the wrecking balls coming out of Thailand, a very aggressive, exciting Thai fighter, great with his elbows and knees, fighting Onion Topic, who fought on one of our first cards at Brim. He's going to be... Uh, Probably as good a fighter on the East Coast as there is, and to have him fight Howrit is, uh, we always want to have a tie on the card, at least one tie to represent the sport, and uh, we're, we're, we're very proud to have him. He comes from Alapet's camp, uh, very well schooled, and both these guys come forward. I think that's going to be a war. Uh, Jason Andrada, you know, always come for a battle, and his opponent, obviously, both these guys are known for just being recognized, so... In this card in particular, I think you're going to see a lot of really aggressive styles. Uh, Bernie that's fighting Kevin from the UK does not go backwards at all. Yeah, yeah I, the, both of them just push. Just push forward. It's going to, going to be a great fight. And, and just, you know, so look at this guy right here. Look at this guy, Tim Lane, one of the best striking coaches in the state right here. 
Look at him. Look at this guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm he sorry. got the camera turned for I'm him. I'm telling you, celebrities everywhere. Everywhere you turn, the celebrities just up? walking by. They're here all over the place. So, but, you know, one of the things that um, I, I'm really excited about, obviously the growth of Muay Thai here in America. But what about elsewhere? Did, you know, you, you've been here in Nevada. Like you mentioned earlier, the first one was in Prim. You know, you've kind of moved around from there. Where, where, where are we looking at a year down the road? We look moving into other states, other areas. Yeah, we've been approached, again, you know, we've got so many offers and we just kind of been really focused on what we tried to do here in Las Vegas. Uh, I'm sure next year we're going to be doing some fights and maybe even by the end of this year outside of Nevada. That would be great. Some great would, opportunities for us. Now, would there be any issues with the fact that the, your Muay, Muay Thai Lion fights goes full rules? Would that be, is that an issue with some commissions? It is. It is, actually. Um, but obviously that's something we're going to consider before we go into an area because we will only do full rules. Yeah, cause, and that, that makes it so much more exciting. And, you know, one of the things I found so interesting was, you know, the support you've gotten not only from the, the, the fighters and, you know, the, the community, but, you know, Access TV. They're loving what you're doing. Pat Militic actually took a pay cut. A pay cut to do this stuff. He's such a he's such a fan. He was talking actually. He had talked to Heidi and I as he was leaving the show, and he's just so excited. He was just so pumped. He was elated that Muay Thai was not only back on. We're not on even TV. paying him tonight. Yeah. If he showed up, and I but, can't shut him up. But <laughs> not even that it was on TV, but that it, the response it got. I mean, trending on Twitter worldwide. You know, to, to have Pat involved in and. Uh, Michael Chabala, I, mean, uh, I mean, the voice. Most knowledgeable voice. man in the sport. Especially, especially when we're talking about the stand-up realm. Yes. yes. The big kabosh! <laughs> that man is a gem. <laughs> you know, to have those guys calling our fights, like I said, a year ago, two years ago, you know, uh, to ask me if that would have happened, you know, in my wildest dreams, I'm absolutely thrilled with how far we've come. Yeah, I'm so excited for you, and like we've been saying the whole show, you, you Finally, we have a promotion that is doing it right. They, taking the right steps, not only the way you treat the fighters, but the way you've, you've treated the, you know, the grooming of the belt, waiting until you can actually have a legitimate belt and make yourself stand. Uh, you know, all, the, all the best in the world with the fights tonight. Uh, we thank you so much for stopping by. Um, and remember, come on down to the Hard Rock, get your tickets, see w some of the best stand-up fighters in the world, and come on down and see our boy Mike. Get yourself a signed pair of gloves from Lion Fights tonight. Let me ask you a question. Are those virgin gloves? Nobody's put their hands in them. No, but he put them right, he pulled them All right, right out so of the bag before he you, came. You here. heard that, people. Not one finger, not even a pinky has been in those gloves yet. Yeah, and I understand undercard fights going on right now. Yep, they just started the amateur card, and rumor has it there's going to be some fighters coming later. I don't know anything about it, guys. I just, just know I, I heard some are coming by. I know last <laughs> last show you had a packed house. Gilbert Melendez was here. <laughs> Scott Coker was here. Dean of Mean Keith Jardine came by. I mean, packed house. And, and you know, front row, you're always going to see the Sugar Ray Zephyr. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He might be coming too. Wink, wink. Wink, wink. So. Yeah, where is Ray? So we, we appreciate your time. Wish you the best of luck for the rest of the show. And thank you again, Scott. Guys, thanks for all your support. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So, yeah, okay. So listen, we're going to take a quick break because we only have about an hour left. We still have to talk a little bit about these fights. We've got some guests coming on, some very special oh, surprises. Very special. I don't know. Uh, name I dropping. I'm not name dropping. Hold on. Uh, I, I do know that there's a big list. Fights are starting 7 o'clock on Access TV. That's 7 on the Pacific Coast, people. I know it's a little later on the East Coast, and that sound like a name. Did we, did we miss the fights already? What happened? Starts at 7? No, come on down to the Hard Rock if you're here in Vegas. If not, watch on Access TV tonight. We will be back in a minute. MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio, 920 Las Vegas.